The Ensemble podcast is intended for professional financial advisors. This content is created in partnership with our sponsor, Generation Life Limited, ABN 68092 843902, AFSL 225 408, and is limited to publicly available information. Before acting on any general advice, you should consider whether appropriate and obtain financial advice from a qualified financial advisor. Ensemble does not hold an AFS license and does not provide any financial advice or services or endorse any general advice. If a PDS or IM exists, you should obtain a copy and review it thoroughly before making a decision. Listening to Strategies to Facilitate Intergenerational Wealth Transfers, a special five part mini series from the Ensemble Podcast. Over five episodes, we talk to authors, practitioners, product providers, and a lawyer to reveal what works and what doesn't for advisors and their clients when it comes to retiring and leaving a legacy. As the pioneer of Australia's first truly flexible investment bond, Generation Life has been at the forefront of providing innovative, tax-effective investment solutions since 2004. As an innovation-led business, Generation Life constantly strives to enhance investment solutions to optimise after-tax investment performance for investors. As a leading specialist provider of tax-optimised investment and estate planning solutions, as well as investment-linked lifetime annuities, Generation Life works closely with financial advisors to secure the financial futures of many Australians and their families. Hello and welcome back to this special XY Advisor podcast mini-series focused on the Retirement Income Covenant and its implications for advisors. I'm Vin Scully, Veteran Advisor and Founder of LifeSherpa, Australia's most affordable financial advice service. I'm joined in the studio today here in North Sydney by Grant Hackett, Chief Executive Officer and Managing Director at Generation Life, and his colleague Philippe Arujo. General Manager Sales, Marketing and Operations. Generation Life has been at the forefront of providing innovative investment solutions for over 17 years and is the pioneer of truly flexible investment bonds. It's a regulated life insurance company and its parent company, Generation Development Group Limited, is listed on the Australian Stock Exchange. With over $2.5 billion invested, Gen Life is a leading provider of tax-effective investment products for Australians. Welcome, Grant. Welcome, Philippe. Thank you very much for having us. Thank you for having us, Vince. So, tell us what's been happening at Gen Life. There's been a lot of changes around income streams, so it's quite an exciting time for our advisor audience. Yeah, it's been a really exciting time for for our business. Over the last few years, we've really innovated a lot into the investment bond space, where we've brought out you know new products, new investments, uh, new estate planning features. We've come out with our tax optimized range, which we now have eighteen funds that are playing. You know, paying tax rates that are in the teens, so the tax arbitrage is wide, widened for a lot of the market. So, for us as a, a business, it's it's a really really exciting time. It's been a lot of innovation. We've seen that come through in sales inflows. We used to have about four hundred to four hundred and fifty advisors do business with us on a twelve month rolling basis. That now is closer to two thousand. So it's quite amazing that the penetration we have. And, and look, we love the industry. We're massive advocates. So for us to be creating products that suit the individual needs of, of the client and enable the advisor to strengthen their value proposition has, has been a lot of a lot of fun for us. Well, 2,000 advisors, that's almost one in eight. Mm. So you must be doing something right. Yeah, well, Felipe and I seem to be on a plane every five minutes. <laughs> so, you know, we reintroduce ourselves to our kids every now and again. It's It's been a really, really busy five years. And Look, I, I think a big part of the industry, when you're doing things that are new, you've got to get out there and you've got to educate people. You've got to build the relationships, of course. You've got to build the trust. So I think for us, that always comes first and foremost. And also, we like to hear the feedback firsthand. Um, you know, we're executive directors in the business running the life company. But at the end of the day, the best way to develop a strategy is to talk to the market, talk to the financial advisors, understand what they want, understand what their clients need, and start to build around that. So yeah, it's it's been a lot of effort, but it's certainly been rewarding. We we invest a lot in the structures that, that we have. Innovation is a cultural value of ours at Generation Life, and we're proud ourselves of the fact that all of our products are strategy aligned. So when we're talking to our advisors, we come in with a different perspective. We're not really selling just a fund. We're selling a strategy that benefits their clients. So we come in with a goals-based mind. We're educating advisors now in the new era of investment bonds. Most advisors are familiar with investment bonds. They've been around for a very long time. They've actually been around in Australia since before superannuation. Now, they were an industry that got to about $50 billion in size. Then superannuation was introduced. Super guarantee was introduced in 92. And rightfully so, it took the focus away from investment bonds. It wasn't until 2017, within the changes induced by the Liberal government to superannuation, that they highlighted the need for an alternative structure 
but we're investing heavily to ensure and to disrupt this market because the providers up until when we came into to the role and to the market in 2017 weren't investing in the structure, but we're investing heavily to ensure that we address a lot of the missing minas associated with investment bonds. So they've been known for lack of investment choice, as Grant said, high admin fees, no features. So we have addressed them progressively over the last four and a half years, but always with that client mindset. Right? We're an organization that it's unashamedly and proudly pro-advisors. We want to make sure that we're supporting advisors in this country because we firmly believe in the value of advisors. The latest product we've made available exclusively for advisors, and we are always in conversations with advisors around what else can we be doing here to truly innovate, to disrupt it with the with the mindset of how can clients benefit from the structures that we provide. It's good, Philip, that you raised the issue of strategy. I mean, you can probably tell from the color of my hair that I've been around this <laughs> for quite some time. And if you go back to the early 90s, investment bonds were primarily sold on the tax arbitrage. Mm-hmm. And of course, back then... The top margin rate of forty nine and a half cut in at fifty thousand dollars. Mm. So, you know, the vast bulk of taxpayers were top rate taxpayers. Mm-hmm. Whereas today that cuts in at hundred and eighty thousand, which is probably five percent of taxpayers. And as you say, the products were reasonably inflexible and often the investment products inside them weren't as good. I mean I mm-hmm. um, Probably won't mention any brand name, but certainly <laughs> yeah. that was my introduction yeah. to investment bonds. But today, I think it's more about the other applications around estate planning, around, mm. and certainly for our younger members, the saving for their, you know, the number of people who will come in and go, I've just had a baby, I want to set aside some money. And they may not be top rate taxpayers, but the out of sight, out of mind benefit doesn't turn up on their tax return, mm. doesn't affect their FTB claim mm. and it's less tempting to pull it out when the expense of uh, childcare hits when the baby turns two or three. Yeah. But that's obviously the tip of the iceberg. Now, yeah. you know, in other episodes of this thing, we've talked a bit about the retirement income side of things. So, June, talk to me about what you're seeing advisors use the product. Yeah, I think. Um you know, just in terms of the tax arbitrage, you're right. Going back to the early '90s, that that fifty thousand dollars threshold. I'm not sure relative today that could be, you know, 100, 150. So obviously that would have grown quite materially. Over but I think it was more the number of taxpayers who paid. Yeah, c- correct. And and if we look at a lot of our funds now, you know, they have an average tax rate of fifteen percent, which you know, there's few people pay as you go that are going to be beneath that sort of number. So. We've really, um, I guess, widened the tax arbitrage inside the product because we work on revenue account versus capital account, which allows us to do things like offset capital losses against income. And that's why we've been able to bring our tax rate down quite materially inside our funds. So that's sort of what one aspect um, to that. So the tax arbitrage is certainly solid. The second point that you touched on, estate planning, it's been massive. Um, we did $639 million worth of inflows last year and 55% of people um, investing in the product the primary use was for estate planning purposes. So because of binding nominations, obviously high conflict families, trying to bypass a generation, look after grandchildren, the fact that there's no tax upon death, regardless if you're a dependent or a non-dependent, all these great features inside the product obviously make it super attractive from that perspective as well. And the third point that you raised just around um, saving for a future cost for a newborn baby, I mean, it's, it's a great vehicle to be able to do that. So if you've got someone that's, you know, bringing in, you know, the first, second, third or whatever child, it's a great way to be able to just go, okay, I can put that money in there. I know it's in a great tax environment. It's not adding to me hitting the next tier, you know, when it comes to your marginal tax rate. Um, And I know it's out of sight, out of mind. It's created that discipline for me. And the fact that, you know, it's got things like credit protected features around it um, under the Bankruptcy Act. So there's a lot of benefits depending on what part of life that you're in. And it's actually the reason we rebranded ourselves Generation Life because we actually have a solution for each generation. And it comes back to the point that Felipe was making before. It really is a strategic-based approach because we want to make sure that we're delivering the goal for a client, not trying to sell them a product. And we've always been very upfront. If the product's not going to serve the purpose that you want, please do not take it um, because it's all about integrity when it comes to, to selling financial products. And we want to make sure we keep that fully intact. When we started, actually, back in 2017, the number one core strategy that we were seeing utilized at Generation Life back then 
was as a savings vehicle to fund a future cost, right? Most commonly associated with private school fees, you know, investment bonds are a big, they're a big vehicle. One. They're a big <laughs> one. They're a big one. Um, but they are a common vehicle, particularly for grandparents wanting to bypass the generation, go directly to the grandkids and ensure that they create a savings vehicle that can be utilized for a future goal in mind, right? Private school fees, house deposit, gap. Don't have to talk to me about private school. So, there you go. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I've got three young kids, so I'm not, not looking forward to it. Um, but we, you know, we take great pride at Generation Live to see the evolution of case studies. Uh, we take great pride on, on uh, having white ball sessions with advising and illustrating the benefits of utilizing the investment bond as a structure to facilitate the intergenerational transfer of wealth. Uh, we take great pride on educating advisors on how they can be utilized as a way to facilitate the accumulation of wealth for, for wealth accumulators. And the reason why I say that is that you know, Grant highlighted the tax arbitrage available of investment bonds versus investing in you know, personally and obviously Having water can be quite punitive tax rates if you're investing personally. Um, but with investment bonds, obviously, you've got a cap 30%. You can reduce significantly with income tax management. But Generation Life is leading the way by introducing this notion of capital management and increasing even further the arbitrage available by the investment bond structure versus directly. All right? So you can have structures that have a diversified um, asset allocation pay an average between you know, 7 to, to 14% tax rate instead of your personal tax rate, be it 32, be it 39, be it 47 and a half. Um, on, the, on the estate planning side, you know, we were recently in the US and you know, on the top five trends that we saw in the US, now the practices are doing incredibly well, all have incorporated estate planning as part of their core proposition. So it's really encouraging for us to have conversations with advisors that goes and touches on estate planning as a strategy because we know that that's safeguarding their business, that's helping advisors around the country to have a conversation that touches on the work that they've done with their clients to accumulate the wealth, but now ensuring that that wealth will be distributed according to their clients' wishes. I'm sure you guys spend as much time on social listening as many of us spend on social media and a number of fairly high-profile influencers, if that's a word I'm allowed to use, <laughs> putting out a lot of fairly negative press around mm -hmm. investment work, which I think sort of stems back from the old marketing around that this is all about tax, mm -hmm. whereas it's actually about these other things to me. But you know, they, the argument that um, you know I've got to give up my capital gains tax discount mm -hmm. because it's all on revenue account, as you said, I think a, a lot of the fee arguments have sort of gone because yeah. they're not actually expensive anymore. Correct. Yeah, and certainly you know, if you couple it with yeah, the Vanguard type products, mm -hmm. and it's not mm -hmm. it's not that expensive. Yeah. Um, whereas thirty years ago they were at rate six. No. Um, so those arguments around uh, giving up my capital gains tax discount, mm -hmm. and therefore, even if I'm a top rate taxpayer, I would otherwise pay twenty four percent on my long term capital gain. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're paying thirty. Do you have resources that would help an advisor deal with that sort of? Media noise. Absolutely. I mean, obviously, these guys are not yeah. qualified yeah. financial planners or mm. CFAs, but what resources have you got to help advisors deal with that sort of negative publicity? Yeah, it's, it's a great point. And it's really interesting because, you know, we, we've sat there, we've read through a lot of this stuff. And to be honest, there's a lot of, I guess, common fallacies within that knowledge, um, unfortunately, because it's positioning things incorrectly. Yeah. Um, and yes, whilst you don't get that that discount from you know the capital growth point of view, you actually get something that's much better because we've transitioned a lot of our funds across to mandates and we do work on revenue account. Um, there's one thing that I never read in any of those comments. And if they said you can offset a capital loss against income, and what does that create in terms of value and benefit for the end client or investor? It would be really powerful to see that. So it's always interesting to read arguments, but when they come one eyed, it can be a little bit frustrating Absolutely. as a brand. And you certainly want to see the whole bit because we'll we'll say when it doesn't work and we'll say when it does work. We want to be really transparent about that. But we also don't want them positioned incorrectly. So, And it's up to us. And I, I welcome any of those influencers to come and have a conversation, reach out to me directly, sit down with our investment team, understand our investment process. We've got calculators now that show the difference between you know, the tax optimized series versus the old structure. Um, and the reality is a lot of our products we're creating in some of our diversified funds. We've got a track record now. We said we were doing this, you know, two or three years ago, going across to the mandates to maximize work and revenue account. And the 12 months just gone for some very, very big fund manager brand names. We're doing 
um, across a balanced strategy, 170 basis points of additional return, doing 190 basis points for tax re- after tax returns, um, and 200 basis points in, in additional return in the high growth strategy. So you think in a low growth environment that we're in at the moment, or even a negative environment, 200 basis points is a material amount of your overall return. So we're really proud of some of the innovations that we've brought to the market. And Certainly, when you see the the misdemeanors um, around, you know, some of the way it's actually taxed and the way it works in practice, um, is a little bit frustrating. But at the same time, we welcome to bring those people into the fold, educate them on how it actually works within our business and the outcome that it can actually generate for the client. And then, even on top of that, let's not forget about the things that we're touching on: the estate planning features, the fact that it's credit protected, the fact that you can transfer your investment bond to anybody else, and there's no tax implications for that. It's tax free upon death. Like. You know, there's a lot of other things. Even if the tax was marginal, you would still go, I want all these other features wrapped around it as well and the security of knowing it's credit protected. Um, and to you, to your point, Vince, just the fact that it's a great savings vehicle as well. So, yeah, it's it's certainly one of those things where you see someone write that, oh, they, they pay tax on an unrealized gain. And you're like, no, we don't. Because if we do that, it gets reinvested fully. So, yeah, but that's a good point. I was yeah. going to ask you that, Christian. Obviously, the unit price includes a provision for the yeah. tax on the unrealized capital gain, yeah. which obviously is how you make every super fund does it. It's how you make <laughs> a redemption fair. Yeah. But is that money still invested or is it actually reserved? It's 100% invested, every single cent of that provision. The best way I describe a provision to people is go, when you've bought an investment property and it's grown from half a million to a million dollars, you know you've got capital gains at some point. That would be your provision. You can sit there and look at it and know, if I was to sell it and crystallize it today, I'm going to pay that portion in tax. That's exactly what a provision is inside our fund. You don't pay that unless you withdraw the funds. And we have to legally show the withdrawal value. But the reinvestment value is much, much higher. Just like if you didn't sell your investment property, it would be at the million dollars that would be reinvested to the next year and hopefully have a great year and there's plenty of growth in there. So no, a provision is there to make sure there's equity amongst all unit holders and everyone pays their fair share of tax. Of course, every super fund does, does it. Use it. <laughs> it's, it's nothing new, but it seems to get called out in investment bonds. And I've even seen some literature where we take some of that or this, and I'm like, no, we don't. That's investors' money that gets fully reinvested and gets the compounding effect of that. And the longer you obviously stay in, stay in the more value that provision will be for you. And, and if you allow me, Vince, you know, I think, you know, one of the issues with the industry of investment bonds is that Generation Life is a disruptor. We come into spaces, we innovate, we have done it with investment bonds, uh, we're doing it with lifetime annuities. In the investment bonds, we're the leaders and the only ones managing our options and including this capital process that Grant has spoken, which reduces the effective tax rate significantly. So the influencers that talk about you know, the fact that you know, investment bonds don't receive the CGT discount they're correct. What they may not know is how Generation Life is leading now the industry and it's addressing what is obviously you know, the shortcoming of investment bonds because obviously you know, the life company is the legal beneficiary owner of the assets by actually turning a negative into a positive, which is we're now able to offset a capital loss with income. Imagine if you're able to do that at a personal level, right? You can, you know, particularly with the market. We prefer to how we have it. Exactly. That's a, that's a really good point. Right. If there is a fund manager that doesn't have any of them, I want to know. <laughs> <laughs> I want to know the best thing, right? Uh, and, and unfortunately, you know, I think they happen. But, you know, we can we can do it at scale because we've got thousands of parcels and any holdings at any day with due to the employees that we've received. And it's even in a positive sense when you look at something like a buyback, so a large corporate action where you've got the discount, of course, of up to 14%, but then you get the franking, and that's why a lot of people participate. That actually eliminates tax inside the portfolio for us. And what sort of volume are you doing in investment bonds before we leave them and move on to the more interesting stuff? Yeah, well, to be honest, I mean, we came into the business and it was almost 14 years and to get to you know sort of $690, $700 million worth of total FUM. Last year we did six hundred and thirty nine million just in the year of inflow. In business. Yeah. So we're the well, big inflow. Yeah, we're well over two billion now. You know, the run rate, you know, per quarter um is basically what we used to do in a full year if you go back five or six years ago. So um there's been a material shift and like I said, the amount of advisors actually doing business with us and doing repeat business, you know, deepening and you know, that uh transaction with their clients now in terms of going, there's more solutions for my clients than I even anticipated. So 
It's been really, really nice to see that uptake. And and like I said, we're very much focused on advisors. Um, you know, all of our marketing, all of our distribution activity, all of our calculators, everything we build, we actually build for advisors because we're trying to make them the rock stars to their clients. Um, so it's really important to us that we take on that feedback and continue to innovate to make sure that we help them with their solutions. And look, we've just sat here and spoken about a few misdemeanors of investment bonds. The reality is they're quite complex because it's not a common structure like superannuation. Yeah. Um, so, you know, we really have to sit there with advisors, educate them, educate their practice to be able to help them explain it with confidence to their clients. So that's another big reason why we focus on the, on the advisor space rather than direct to market. Even though each year our direct to market business has probably grown, I don't know, probably what, 10, 20 fold over the last four years. So this is consumers walking into your digital door. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. And we're not doing any marketing to that channel, but it's it's quite profound how many people are actually engaging directly with the business as well. The last thing that, that I can leave you with, Vincent, if you allow me in investment bonds, is that the fact that it is credit protected and the fact that you can transfer the ownership of an investment bond to any legal entity in Australia without triggering a tax event, so it becomes really interesting, right? Because this is when you can truly then work with clients around how do they want that wealth to be transferred? Who do they want it? Do they want any restrictions? No restrictions. Do they want to make sure that it is on the hands of the beneficiaries absolutely tax-free, irrespective that they are a six-act beneficiary or not, but with the assurance that it will go... If they want to go to a, leave the money to a charity, they know that they can do so utilizing the structure of investment. What's bonds. important about what Felipe just said as well, we've built a whole raft and we'll continue to. We've got a new PDS soon that's going to come out with some new toys for advisors. Um, but all of these new features around estate planning, all of this tax optimized series, completely free. We don't charge any extra for that. Our same tiered pricing structure that we introduced a few years ago to bring down the cost of the product is exactly the same. So all of these innovations that we're doing, people might think, oh, if I add these features on, is that going to cost me more? No, it's the same administration fee. It's all done on the amount of business that you have with us, and it's obviously tiered down from from there. You've mentioned earlier that you know, providers of the past, there were a few issues with providers of the past investment bonds, which I agree. Uh, one, of the, one of the issues was that providers of the past of investment bonds, insurance bonds, as they were then called, uh, only enabled a menu of the provider, right? We are an open architecture that is really guided by demand of advisors, right? So we are addressing any issues that we have with our investment menu based on demand of advisors. We've recently included model portfolios. So we give you more scale. We're replicating investment options available to advisors in IDPS and super in this new tech structure, which is investment bonds to give them the full flexibility, but the, you know, the uniform approach on how they want their client's asset allocation to be be it personal, investment bonds, or inside super or account-based pension. Just one final point. Do you have to keep set capital aside against an investment bond? Yes, we do. We do. So it's it's pretty small. So it's a small amount of operational capital, which is 40 basis points of the overall fund. So you know, for, for our business, it sits at $4 million per billion dollars of business written, which we've got about three or four times worth of cash um, in terms of the capital coverage that's required. Okay. And that's pretty much covering the, the death benefit portion? No, so the death benefit portion when it comes to an investment bond is purely the investment bond is an investment linked life insurance product. So there's no capital required for that. It goes straight to them. In terms of the investment linked lifetime annuity, which is called life income, when it comes to the death benefit of that or when someone's um, living too long, <laughs> we, we have a hundred You never read too long. We want them to live too, too long because we want the product to be of high value. But Whenever you get to the point where someone's lived way over any sort of life expectancy, we have 100% reinsurance, and that's when Hanover Re with a double A minus credit rating kick in, top up the reserve pools, which are the investments, to make sure that liability, as per their investment return, is 100% paid out. Yeah, that brings us on to the whole retirement income mm. opportunity for advisors. Yeah. And I think I said this in episode one of this podcast where people talk about longevity risk. Mm. And believe me, when you turn 60, Longevity risk becomes longevity opportunity. Yeah, because I don't see it as risk. I see it as an opportunity. Yeah, yeah. Um, but talk to me about particularly around the you know, the more innovative retirement income products around you know, moving on from the traditional fixed annuity or mm. lifetime annuities, um, which probably weren't very attractive when interest rates were low. Yeah, and they definitely look more attractive now for sure. But you guys have actually got some very interesting stuff in this space. So 
Yeah, let's move on to talk about that. It's it's really, really exciting. Felipe made the point. We like to innovate in every single category that we go into, and we really wanted to go into lifetime annuities. I mean, this market's basically doubling in size in you know, less than the next 10 years. You know, All of these retirees who started in super in 1993. <laughs> Correct. Got a huge super balances. Um, you know, want to have access to the age pension. We, we're seeing by 2026 that there'll be 137,000 Australians turning 65 that year. So it's not far away. I think it's about 126,000 this year alone that are turning 65. You go, go back just over 10 years, it was about 40,000 a year. So we're seeing this wave of baby boomers really come through the system. Reality is, if you have a you know relatively wealthy, healthy 65-year-old couple walk into your practice today, there's a guarantee that one of them will still be walking in at 95. So, and the trouble is, when people hit you know 60 or 65, they get there and they've got this pool of money and they go, I'm really scared I'm going to run out of this because yep. I don't know how long I'm going to live for. So they live frugally in the years of retirement where they can be active, where they can do the things they wanted to do, go on the holidays, tick off the bucket list. And then all of a sudden they get to the back end of retirement when, you know, physically you're fairly depreciated by then, you're not healthy enough to do all the things that you would have liked, and you've got this massive pool of money that's left there. So what we're trying to do is give certainty, one, in terms of going, have the lifestyle that you want in retirement, but have the certainty that you're not going to run out of income. Which is the, the big challenge that, you know, what we're seeing, and I think you just alluded to it, that the number of retirees who die with their full capital. Yeah, I'm at the end of the quest. Yeah. And, um, you know, I talk, talk about this is, you know, we spend a lifetime as advisors teaching people spending bad, saving good. Yeah. And then we have to turn around in retirement and go, well, actually, spending's yeah. good, just not too much. Yeah, yeah. And, in your means. Um, so how do you manage what actuaries call longevity risk? Um, yeah, only an actuary could come up with that. Yeah. But <laughs> the opportunity to live a, lo- a long, prosperous, purpose-filled life and make sure that your money doesn't run out and yet be comfortable spending it. Yeah. I, I think the big thing is, how do I live a retirement stress and anxiety-free? Because that's a generation life, the question that we kept coming back to, what do we actually want to achieve for clients? What do we want to see through retirement? Well, we want to see them spend money and not be so worried that they're going to run out of money because they don't know when they're going to pass away. So we never thought of our approach as a silver bullet. We always looked at it as a combination. And our calculators that we have only for financial advisors look at all the other products, such as your account-based pension, such as your age pension, et cetera. So we wanted to make sure that we included our product as part of an overall retirement plan. Of course, you want your account-based pension because you want access to capital just in case you need it. You want to have a you know as much age pension as possible because people have worked their whole life and paid tax. Now give me something back. Um, and of course, when it comes to you know life income, our investment linked lifetime annuity, that addresses longevity risk by knowing that you're not going to, to ever run out of money, but at the same time, access more of those age pension benefits that you wanted to. So we really looked at it and went, wow, wouldn't it be nice to be able to see an advisor who could construct the same you know asset allocation with the same risk profile inside of all of these products so they could be consistent instead of having these different weightings because you only had a traditional lifetime annuity. So what we've enabled is an investment menu that wraps around um, an investment-linked lifetime annuity that you can change at any point in time, change or construct your portfolio depending on your risk profile changing because you're going to be retired for a reality probably anywhere from you know sort of 20, 25 up to 35 years. Per- perhaps, yeah. I mean, I, I had a great auntie that lived till she was 108. So it can be a very, very long time retired. So if you believe in investment markets and you believe over a 30 or 40-year period that they're going to grow this is a perfect product for you. And at the same time, you can actually de-risk the product by going into more fixed interest type um, you know, products or more defensive products um, as your account-based pension starts to dwindle down. So we've been really proud to be able to introduce this option for clients, for advisors. The fact advisors can stay connected with their clients with this product as well, knowing that their risk profile is going to change over the course of retirement. But being invested into markets instead of something that's a fixed term one is such a great opportunity to get growth in income at the, the same time and also outgrow things like CPI, you know, inflation, which is really so obviously getting access to the upside of markets is a good thing. Mm. Being impacted by the downside is the risk we're trying to avoid by using the duty. So how do you get the best of both worlds? The, the interesting thing about that is we've come to have this mindset where we take an annuity out that we want to have zero downside, which of course, if you have zero downside, you're always going to limit the upside. Cool. Um, so at the end of the day, you're going to have some level of volatility in there if you're going to be linked to investment markets. 
you can determine what level of volatility. If you want to go something super defensive, obviously you're going to have minimum growth, but you're going to have minimum downside. So that's your choice. Um, if you want to go probably what most people do in their retirement, they look at a balanced option. You could have a balanced option inside your, your lifetime annuity. You know, the bucketing strategy is a fantastic strategy. This is a way where you can even reduce your cash portion slightly in the bucketing strategy by having a lifetime annuity. We've modeled our annuity out by starting the year before, you know, Black Monday, GFC, Tech Bust, et cetera. And yeah, yeah, yeah. correct. We, we've gone very, very far back. So to look at all the various different periods and always you outgrow a traditional lifetime annuity. And usually, I'd have to say 99% of the time, even in those poor market conditions, starting at the wrong time, you were still ahead. So overall, you're going to have a lot more income. Yes, you will see some volatility there. We made sure with our product that it wasn't everyday volatility or every month volatility. It's only 12-month volatility and you get repriced at the end of each financial year. So we we wanted to make sure that everything aligned with all of your Centrelink um, entitlements and you know, with the process that a financial advisor would take with your overall planning for retirement. We, we looked, Vince, at very importantly around, you know, how do we really disrupt this market? We wanted to empower advisors, right, to have a structure that caters for the longevity opportunity, but ensures that they are involved for the retirement life of their clients, right? Not just that first year, set and forget. We wanted to create a structure that the advisor plays an active role year on year, as Grant said, either to make the most of opportunities when they present themselves to de-risk a client when obviously no, it, it is required, but also aligning it with the spending, with the needs of retirees in Australia. Number one was we want to bring more income into the early years of retirement when they're actually physically able to enjoy that income. So maximize that income uh, to protect against sequency risk, which is obviously I mean, the risk of capital erosion post subsequent periods That's of down nine, markets. Nine That's exactly right. So for us, when we looked at the design of the product, the number one for us was we want to guarantee the income units that the clients will receive as part of this investment in lifetime annuity. Because if you were to compare what happens with account-based pension, unfortunately, when the market has a downturn, your client's income needs remain the same. You may have to pull capital out of the account-based pension. You re-baseline your clients at a lower level and obviously it takes them longer to, to recover. With us, we guarantee those income units. So when, when you purchase a investment link lifetime annuity with Generation Life, we guarantee that first year's income, but we also guarantee how many income units your clients will have for their life. They change if you conduct a switch, but if they don't conduct a switch, it is guaranteed. What changes is the value of those units. So a unit of income represents an actual dollar number of income? Yeah, the, the, the best way to, to look at it, um, it's very, very simple. You get your guaranteed income units, um, you know, depending on how much you invest, your sex, your age, um, you receive those. And that's a floor? And so, yeah, that's correct. You say you get 10,000 income units, they never change unless you change to a different unit price. It'll change on a relative basis. But the way you work out your income is you go 10,000 income units times the unit price of your chosen investment, call it a dollar, equals $10,000 $10, worth of income. That unit price goes up to $1.10. Obviously, it's $10,000 times $1.10. So it goes up to $11,000. That never changes. You always have those income units for the rest of your life. And, and so if the value of those units falls, does my income fall? Yes. So if it goes down to $0.90 cents in that scenario that I just gave you, it would be 10000 times 0.9, which would be $9,000 instead of $10,000. So, so yes, you will have volatility in there depending on your investment choice. And I guess that comes to the point where... We can give you very, very low volatility investment options, or you can take a high growth option and you can do your own model portfolio on there if that's what you want to do. However, if you want zero risk, our product is not meant for you. So, you know, you you, you would go elsewhere. So we're, we're not trying to be all things to everyone because if you try and do that, you sort of compromise your product too much. So we wanted to make sure that we fit in this part of the portfolio and we fit there for advisors that want to be active, you know, with both the account-based pension and the lifetime annuity to be able to give advice and change that advice. Is lifetime income enough to satisfy the Centrelink test, but it does move up and down with the market. Correct. Correct. Yeah. So the level of income is reset on an annual basis and is dependent upon the performance of the options chosen for, for the client. 
Um, it does benefit from a unique structure that's never been available in Australia before because Generation Life, again, unique on our legal structure. We ensure that advisors are buying the assets that they're choosing. The money doesn't go into a stat fund and Generation Life invests elsewhere. The, the options that you choose for your clients are actually where the money and the capital is being deployed. So you bind those assets. If there's an exposure to Australian equities, for example, you benefit from any franking credits available. Uh, which on average have been in the last 10 years, 1.3%. So we passed that in full. And remember, it doesn't months. matter what sort of your own marginal tax rate is, a lifetime annuity environment is 100% tax exempt. So therefore, franking just gets grossed up and the full benefit of that flows through into the unit price. So, so even though you bought it potentially with non-super money, mm. it gets you that zero tax that, rate. It goes into a zero environment. That's right. So, it, And again, it talks about when we're talking about investment bonds or super or personal a lifetime annuity environment is a 0% tax environment. And we've never really understood that until now because none of these- so I, I'd, I'd never, I'd never picked that one before. Yeah. So, and this is where when we've done the research and looked at it, we thought, wow, you actually get the full grossing up of franking. And look, most people will have some sort of exposure to Australian equities, which of course is going to have some form of franking in there. So yeah. So the benefit of that we've seen into some of the more high growth products can be up to 200 to 220 basis points over a year. So this is effectively an opportunity- because ordinarily you wouldn't have thought of annuities, mm. lifetime annuities, being for a high net worth. I usually see it more as a Centrelink arbitrage mm. and as a, you know, making sure I don't run out of money. Yeah. But mm. if what you're saying is that because it's zero tax, I'm effectively allowed to invest money beyond my T-bar. If you're in if you're in pension phase and you've got over the one point seven million dollar magic number there in your total super balance, um, you can actually take that balance out. Say you've got two point two, take that five hundred thousand out, and produce income in a one hundred percent tax exempt environment instead of being where your earnings is going to be at fifteen percent. Of course, being over that one point seven million, and that's zero rate inside the annuity and on the income. It depends on what other assets they've got generating because then there is the capital schedule, but you will be paying a lot less tax personally on that income um, in most instances, either zero or very, very close to zero. Yeah. We do all that analysis depending on your circumstances because you've got to look at everything. So I can never say mm. 100%, but inside the investment environment, it's 100% tax exempt. Yeah, so it, it accumulates at a 0% uh, inside lifetime annuity. Um, inside super, completely tax exempt, right? So it is completely a tax exempt thing. But- Can the income units distribute the income? I, I guess that they're there as notional units to be able to show you what your income is going to be based on your investment performance. And it's also... I guess it's the part where people go, well, if it's linked to investment markets, what's guaranteed? Well, it's like if you believe investment markets, there'll always be some level of income there unless every single company in Australia pretty much goes to, to zero and your unit price goes to zero. But those income units never change for the rest of your life. And we've got modeling that we share with advisors that we do in presentations where we show if $100,000 was invested and you took the same amount, exactly the same strategy, same investment strategy, so same risk. Um, inside the lifetime annuity environment versus the account-based pension, taking the same amount of income, you would actually run out of income and capital in the account-based pension after 20 years. Um, depending on market performance, it could be a couple of years before or a couple of years after, um, where you see the lifetime annuity continues to grow in income because of these guaranteed income units. So, so where does that arbitrage come from? Is that from your capital? Well, effectively, it's from, well, the income unit's never changing when you're getting market corrections or downturns or the volatility coming in there. And where it comes from is once you've hit, you know, basically past life expectancy, um, you know, there's all actuarial formulas, of course, all around this. But at that point in time, like a lot of people, particularly advised clients, will live beyond life expectancy. Remember, that's only 50% of the population that get there. The other 50% go much So I'm still picking up my morbidity credits. That's right. And the capital could be fully depleted inside those funds. However, you've still got your income units. You've still got your unit price. So therefore, this is where the reinsurance arrangement actually kicks in. And they top up the reserves or the investment pools to pay out that liability that's owed to you. So- if we have every client that invests with, say we've got a million clients that invest with Generation Life, they all live to their 120, they will get every single cent of their income. It's not a pooled product where if everyone lives too long, the income could potentially thin out. For us, if your investment performance is, I know, generating a compound return of 7 or 8% per year over you know 40 or 50 years in that extreme example, 
every single one of those 1 million individuals will receive their full entitlements of income because that's 100% reinsured. That is a, a very important difference, I think, to me, between the, and the difference between an annuity and a group self immunization right, that the products are available in the market. But just on, on Grant's analysis before around, you know, when does the account-based pension run out and how long does the annuity keep going, that analysis does not even take into consideration the age pension uplift that you can generate for clients, right? Yeah. So for a part pensioner, every 100,000 going to a product like ours can increase the age, age pension by $3,120. So for a 67-year-old male, just using very rough figures here, you can, you can generate a 10.5% return straight away on year one, right? And then you've got potentially another 30, 40 years of upside there of being invested in the market. So with this segregated asset, strategy. Do you still get mortality credits for the people who die before their life expectancy? No, because it's a reinsurance arrangement. Right. So you get the mortality credits in the scenario where it's a pool product or a group self annuitization. So on those sorts of products, yes, yes, you would. Obviously, that can go one way or the other if the pool lives too long and the yeah. actuary's got you know the analysis wrong. We wanted to take that out of it. We wanted this to be really, really simple for someone to, to understand. So we want to say, the investments, they're all investments that you know. The return of those investment is linked to your income units, which you receive. They're punched out to you as part of our quote. And at any point in time, you can price that. You can jump online, have a look at what the unit price is for that investment today, and you can determine what your income would look like roughly. So we've made it very, very simple. And we've said, if all of our pool lives too long, um, it doesn't matter. You're going to receive 100% of your entitlement. So we really wanted to give an income that does have a guarantee to attach to it. We didn't want to come into this discussion, which can get, in, in our view anyway, and obviously not everybody shares this, can be quite confusing. Oh, if people you know, live a little bit too long, that income could potentially thin out a little bit. Um, if people die early, you can get mortality credits, which is going to lift your income. I f you feel like you've got to have a, a PhD in mathematics sometimes to understand these things. And so what we're trying to come back to a generation life is fulfill once, one, an emotional need for the client to make sure they can spend a retirement, have security regardless of how long they're going to live, they're going to receive income beyond the age pension. Um, and the other aspect, let's have something that we can simply explain. Mm -hmm. Income units, times you chose an investment, that's your income. doesn't matter how long you live, whatever that investment that you choose performs at, you'll receive your income. Philippe, what would you say to an advisor looking to get started in this space? I think a strategy that is coming up regularly with, with advisors uh, around the country is to utilize you know, life income as the driver of income for uh, you know, their clients um, and allow the account-based patients to accumulate reality is whilst there's a significant amount of retirees living in an unwanted bequest in Australia right now, uh, there's still a number of clients that want to leave a portion of their assets, you know, ensure that they have a legacy to future generations. Uh, what is really cool or really proud of at Generation Life is that the product that we have now enabled advisors to recommend to their clients is one that maximizes the income. Its, it's core focus is on, on income, ensuring that now, the advisor can then have a conversation on an annual basis that knows how much income they're going to receive from Generation Life, from the account-based pension, from the age pension, from those super assets, and they're utilizing the structures, they're optimizing the structures to its core and life income. It's there on, on the income. The account-based pension is there, hopefully, for this little thing. And it's their liquidity. In the lifetime product, I know that sounds almost a contradiction in terms, but yeah, yeah. So, so what what we did, what we kept coming back to, is what is what is the problem we're trying to solve? So, what we're trying to solve is to give people as much income as possible whilst they're alive. So, we do have a death benefit that's available. That's that's pretty simple formula um, in a very general sense. Basically, your capital amount versus income taken, the balance between that is what you receive in your death benefit. Um, that's pretty much the way that works. It also spits out on a quote calculator what your death benefit looks like. In terms of withdrawal benefit, we could have created that, but then it really does bring down your starting incomes. It's a big compromise. And we thought, well, that's what the account-based pension is for, is the liquidity aspect to it. We're trying to cover longevity risk and sequency risk. So let's focus on the problem we're trying to solve. And that's why we're very, very clear we're not the silver bullet and we don't solve all problems. So this is the one that we do. That's why we work in, you know, sort of coordination with other products and make sure that there is that alignment to produce an outcome that gives you liquidity over here, that gives you longevity risk over here, that helps with sequency risk, gives you certainty. So, um, and that's why our calculators are built to be able to perform like that. So we thought, well, if you go to trade off too much and, and be 
try and be a, a six out of ten across the board. I'd rather be a nine, a ten, a nine, a ten, and then be a, a three and a two over here. I must admit, I never really got the point of liquid lifetime annuities. Okay. Yeah, it should be one or the other. Yeah, and and I just think you, you start to trade things off a little bit much, and you try and be all things. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Then yeah. it sort of seems to be a a marketing solution that doesn't yeah. actually have an investment problem. And, yeah, yeah. Well, and and of course, and there and there's you know professional courtesy to to all the product manufacturers out there, and they do a great job. Um, and and look, they're they're trying to address a certain aspect of the market, and you know there might be five or ten percent. I'm not sure what the numbers would be that want that sort of solution. And that's when we come back to before, of course, inside an investment length of life, time annuity, it's going to be much more growth, but there's going to be a bit of volatility that you have to deal with in there. And and we're with a, a market that appreciates and understand that. But if you want fixed, it's it's probably not the product for you. So, you know, we're, we're, we're really trying to be disciplined as a product manufacturer to go, this is what we are, this is what we aren't. Um, and if you stick to that, normally you can be, you know, the best in class for what you're trying to do. And are you seeing anything happening on deferred annuities? Obviously, they didn't work until very recently. Yeah. Uh, but now the tax has been sold. Yeah. We, we, there's a lot of conversations um, around it. Popularity still, you know, isn't, isn't quite there with that particular product. Um, could things change? Of course they could. Are we interested in going into that space? Not yet. Not yet. It's not something that we've we've considered. We kind of want to build out more of what we're doing. We're seeing a lot of... Great interest, really good envir- uh, advisor engagement, um, growth in our sales quarter and quarter in that space. So we want to continue to build out more features there and, and help with that. But yeah, the deferred space certainly is, you know, there is a market for it, but you know, it hasn't been hugely popular and it's not something that we plan to enter. So what would you say to an advisor who's thinking about, well, looking at retirement income for their client base? And as we said at the beginning, that's more and more advisors. We know that two thirds of Advice clients are over 55 yeah. and getting bigger every year. So what would you suggest an advisor do to get started? In- oh, the, the best way to get started and to understand it and educate yourself and engage with it is just call one of our distribution managers, jump online, have a look at our calculators, or spit through what are your objectives, what's the client situation. We can help you put a plan together to deliver that outcome. So... And I think it's one of those things, as soon as you do one, you understand it a little bit more, and then you see where it fits with all your other clients. But I think just engage with us, have a conversation. We're always a a business that's full of integrity. If the product's not going to work and meet the goals of you and your client, then we will say, do not do it. But if it does, let's have a look. And look, it's really exciting for advisors, the fact that they can actually have a product where they can switch at any time, given the risk profile change, markets changing all the time. You know, last year, you know, 12 months ago, if you were going to say that there was going to be seven or eight interest rate rises in a row, people probably would have locked you up. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we so things can change really, really quickly. So to have the flexibility of change is really, really important, and that's why we're excited to bring that to lifetime annuities because it really does create and open up the market and does shift the thinking of what we thought before around the fixed term can't change them; they're set and forget. Where now it's a, it's a very different market. So I'm just saying. Have a look at it, and, and it might be something for you. We do empower advisors to be able to charge an initial and ongoing a fixed term service fee. Uh, we've got a brand new portal, uh, which we're very proud of, um, that we have recently launched to to the market this year. All the supporting software that we have developed is available via the portal and by wall again for advisors only, so that they can do the modeling required for for the client conversation. But but to your earlier point around you know, how do advisors get started in this space? Look, it's a huge opportunity that we see. Grant highlighted earlier the wave of baby boomers going into retirement now. $3.9 trillion changing hands in the next decade and a half at a rate of $224 billion per annum. Well, I hope it's a long time before I do contribute to that. Yeah, exactly, exactly. You're a big part of that. <laughs> An active conversation that we're having with advisors at this point, as I, as I said earlier, is, you know, is to encourage everyone to look into the space, you know, estate planning, retirement planning, um, is multi-layered and it can be complex. So it's important, you know, as a product provider that we're here to educate. Uh, we are not a specialist in all things, as Grant said. We know the strategies of investment bonds. We know the strategies of lifetime annuity. We're here to support our advisors. Um, we have got our strategy booklets. We run master classes. We run sessions with advisors to, again, unpick where the structures work where they don't work, and how they can be of benefit to clients. Excellent. Grant, Philippe, thank you for joining us today. No worries. Thanks thank for you. having us, Vince. 
Well, that was Grant Hackett, CEO and Managing Director, and Philippe Arujo, General Manager, Sales Marketing Operations from GenLife. I think that's a clear demonstration that product innovation is alive and well in financial services, and nowhere more so than investment and income stream offerings. If you need to learn more about how the GenLife offerings may fit the needs of your clients or create opportunities in your practice, then head on over to the GenLife website at genlife.com.au, which contains a treasure trove of content and collateral, or reach out to Philippe and his team. When we return in the next episode, I'll be chatting to Eric Weigel, who's a certified professional retirement coach and founder of Retire With Possibilities, an advisory and retirement coaching firm dedicated to helping people consciously design their own journey into retirement. Eric is also the author of one of the best books I've read on retirement and its implications. That book is Reimagining Retirement, The Nine Keys to True Wealth. We'll dive deep into the behavioral and psychology side of retirement and uncover a great opportunity for differentiation in the retiree market. So till next time, I'm Vince Scully and you're listening to the XY Advisor podcast. Bye for now.